we're going to start with just what like a big part of this whole event is about, which is the existential hope concept. Um, and the the way that I was onboarded to it is just by starting to work at Foresight a year and a half ago. And Alison had been doing this existential hope website where she'd like collected a lot. It's basically a library of like sources that she thinks other people have suggested also brings them existential hope or like hope for the future, basically. And so what I wanted to do is like take a step back and think about why this could be a useful concept at all, if we think it is. And I kind of want to hear from you because my, I really like the phrase like existential hope. And whenever I talk to people about it, they also seem to like it. Um, and to me, what's, there are a few benefits to the phrase and I want to hear what you think about it basically. So let's see if we can make this happen. Yes. Okay. So existential risk. I think most of you, if you're interested in long-termism are familiar with the term existential risk. So existential hope is, well, existential risk, just to brief everyone, I guess, is just the, the possibility of us all going extinct or like the possibility of all value in the future not coming into fruition. So what's existential hope? Well, it's basically the opposite of existential risk. And the, the way that um, the word came into fruition was uh, Toby Ord and Owen Cotton Barrett wrote a paper like 10 years or so ago, I think, um, called existential risk and existential hope. And they were basically saying like, just the opposite of existential risk, like the opposite of a catastrophe is a U catastrophe. So an event that causes there to be a lot more expected value after the event than before. So it's just the opposite of existential risk, basically, like an event that causes there to be existential risk being an event that causes there to be less value, existential hope causing there to be more value. Um, so like, Maybe a lot of us here are like taking for granted that it matters or like people care about the future, but um, we're just gonna start from the basics here in this long term wisdom track. So um, I claim that it matters because the future matters and that the future holds a lot of expected value. And this is also, I mean, maybe if you read Will McCaskill's recent book, what will the future? It's just the future could be really, really big. Um, there could be a lot of lives in the future. So that's a reason to say that it matters. Um, and other thing, let me move this thing. About the future is that it could be very good, um, which I think um, you, we shouldn't overlook basically considering how much uh, our situations have improved in the last few hundred years. Um, if we can continue to improve it, lives for people and all sentient beings, that's that's a big uh, a big win, and it can make everyone have really good lives in the future. Um, so, why is the term existential hope useful, or like why should we use it more? So this is my claim. <laughs> I think that it can. Um, help us increase the probability of actually reaching like a really good outcome for the future rather than just avoiding existential, existential risk. And I think that it's a concept that can help more people get motivated to think about the future and to get a bit engaged with it. So, um, oh yeah, these are quotes from the paper where they're basically, um, Toby and Owen are saying, well, we should seek out existential new catastrophes in the same way that we seek to avoid X risk. Um, and that hopefully by having a label for the concept, we can help others, you know, we can help each other make better judgments for what to pursue uh, in terms of the future. Um, so yeah, increased probability of reaching a really good outcome for the future. There are two main constraints that uh, I've seen been discussed in sort of long-termism, which is moral cluelessness. Like we don't really know what a good society looks like, like, and it's hard to agree on also. Um, and the second one being that, well, even if we knew <laughs> what it was, 
it would be really hard to to get there basically so that's strategic cluelessness so uh, why do i think hope existential hope is good um having more people motivated to take action for the future is to make that happen people need to have hope like that's number one that's the basic if if you look at climate psychology for example they they have noted that you know just saying like oh we're doomed that's not gonna work in terms of actually making people want to take any type of action towards changing that um if you don't have any hope like hope and action are very intertwined basically um and yeah it can be described as a type of psychological capital that it's a lot of the research done on hope shows that there's just a lot of benefits and it's not hope is not the same as like blind optimism hope is more like understanding that i have a chance of reaching this really good outcome there are going to be challenges along the way but i will deal with them as as they come um also what i like about existential hope is that it's kind of a fresh new concept that seems to resonate with people at like a broader level so it's not like if you say long termism i think that can scare a few people off um it's it's it has like a harder more rational way of phrasing it um transhumanism is also something i find people a lot of people um in the broader society are a bit off put by in general uh, and so if we can find something that's like a bit softer when we talk about the concept like well, why is it useful it's like it has like a bit more of a feminine softer including vibe that people seem to like get excited by uh, rather than yeah these more um more um i don't know harsher transhumanism long termism um so i try to put together like existential hope principles and these are very much um up for discussion like i'd really love to have people's feedback on this um it's kind of basic so the first thing is just like considering what's at stake this is a visualization from um our world in data um yeah basically just all of these yellow dots could be future future lives um the second principle would be to actually start thinking about those scenarios that all of those people that we saw in the last slide could be so yeah let's actually start concretizing not just thinking about like how do we survive the next generation or something but actually like what do we want uh long term for our society like Oh yeah, this is just uh, an example of um, what you'll be working on a bit um, this this today uh, and throughout this weekend. Uh, it's a um, biotechnology scenario. Um, the red one being um, a negative scenario where it's just a quote from Hillary Clinton saying, um, you know, that Al Qaeda was calling on um, biologists to create weapons of mass destruction which is you know um one way that you can use biotech uh, and the other one is more like well we can actually take barren deserts and make them full of life um also biotechnology can help us do this um the third principle would be to consider what trajectory changes we need to reach the existential hope scenarios like if we've actually thought about them like how do we get there um if we know ish what we want um how do we make it happen um and then you can look at like this is from a post that was on the effect of altruism forum on long-termist policy and um we're going to hear more about long-termist policy duncan is going to talk about it later today also um and yeah so just considering what can we do to make these trajectory changes happen what has driven progress historically um yeah, so these are just a few examples. And the fourth principle would be um, to actually, yeah, take action. And that's, this is one way that um, we have this uh, website, existentialhope.com. And these are NFTs that uh, Alexander, who you may have seen, uh, has, she has connected scientists 
to artists and um, we have also asked scientists in our interviews we do with, with them in the existential hope podcast like can you tell us an example of a u catastrophe so like the an existential hope scenario so for example this dog over there that's christine peterson that we interviewed um who said that an example of a u catastrophe would be cryonics working um and so this is a, a visualization of a dog being revived um the uh... <laughs> oh wee -wee. <laughs> Uh, no. And um, no, <laughs> but <laughs> that was good. Um, this um, yeah. So this is just an example of like these are these are actually also going to like the NFT sales proceeds go to fund the the scientists and foresight. So, um, but yeah, in general, just like with the platform, is about trying to opening up the concept to a broader audience. Um, so this is one of the things like the design of the platform in general is like very, I don't know, a bit flashier than I think most long-termist stuff would be. Um, and so, yeah, it's trying to be an onboarding platform. So trying to onboard people to this concept in like a softer way, trying to get a more broader audience excited. But this is like where, um, I would really love to have your feedback. One thing that um, I always sort of get, you know, go back to is this Bostrom quote. Um, I feel like, you know, whenever there's a talk on anything that's like long-termism or anything, you have a million Bostrom quotes. Uh, I managed to only have one in this presentation. Um, yeah, it's basically saying that, you know, it's very hard for us to predict what humans or whatever we will be in the future will like want. Uh, in terms of their lives, just like, um, yeah, if we had been asked, our ancestors would have been asked thousands of years ago, they would have said that we wanted more bananas, but you know, that's not, like we have, we're fine on bananas now, um, we, we want other things. Um, but I still think that, you know, trying to plan, seek out, like taking an aim is important because I do think that drives better action than despair or anything like that. Um, and I do think that, like I said, I mean, Boston has this thing also where probably if we avoid existential risk, we'd be fine. But if we really try to aim for really positive scenarios, we're just more likely of reaching them. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this because um, and this is i mean we're in a very close setting so we can all like this is not me talking so much it's having this discussion but i would be super curious to hear what you think about the phrase like what what does it make you think of existential hope do you think that it's useful um do you think that it's adding something new to the table or is it just like should we just go with long-termism or something like that um i'm throwing it out to you no. Interesting. I never associated the two terms. Yeah. Um, I thought that, yeah, to me, long termism was this concept of you know, long, long term, long, long facing future, uh, thriving. But I don't think I associated existential hope with necessarily very long term. To me, it, it was also inclusive of just like being hopeful in the near future or in the present. Yeah. Um. So I think it's. I mean, it's such a nice term. I don't know, but I do think they offer something slightly different. Yeah. Long term, let's hope. Yeah. Should I? I think. What, do I say one? I was surprised that you said that uh, it has a more softer sound to it mm -hmm. because, like, existential is such such a strong emotive word for me. Um, but I'm also biased, like I worked in experts for like several years before I discovered the word. So maybe it's just like I'm primed to combine it with the experts. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's also like how I discovered it and I thought it was like really great as I'm here today. In a sense like, yeah, I want like the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, like for me, probably it relates more to like, 
I think the strengths in comparison to say transhumanism is that it doesn't um, involve for me at least a specific future where it's um, oh yeah we are like cyborgs or whatever uh, mm -hmm. it's more like okay something's like war and existential conflict or other causes um, are in the past and now we can decide how we want to flourish and what shape that will take and therefore I think it's like good to have it as a general term and not trying to maybe uh, specify it so people can put in their own visions of what that might mean yeah. what about like yeah more bananas yeah. <laughs> yeah. no yeah thank you because one of my um, like confusions is I'm, I haven't been sure if if people um, if people working on X rays get excited about the existential hope concept because um, yeah because it can seem so Pollyannish or like naive um, so yeah but mm -hmm. it made you excited then yeah and equals one it works <laughs> so yeah any yeah you just one data point. yeah. Can't speak for others. So I'm kind of, I don't know anything here, although this is kind of new to me, and I'm a filmmaker and psychotechnologist. So basically, for me, most of this is relatively new, and I think that I'm probably a bit closer to the uh, general public mm -hmm. when it comes to this. So for me, looking at that, for me, the keyword is hope. Mm -hmm. Right? And this I link to the notion of aspiration. So people have been talking about aspiration a lot lately. Like, I think there's a big difference between fleeing from something rather than moving towards yes. something else. It's much easier to marshal your forces and figure out what exactly you should be doing if you're doing it not at a place of fear, but rather at a place of excitement and energy. Like, those are just two different things. I think that fear narrows your opportunities rather than widening it. So I think that this, it calls for agency and collaboration, because again, like, I'm Russian-Ukrainian, you know, <laughs> fear does th th some things to your thinking. Fear is the mind killer. So existential hope sounds a lot better, because otherwise, I think long-termism kind of, like, assumes that you kind of skip all the set of stages that, before you get to the, to the, the end. And, yeah, you can't always afford to do that. Obviously, that's a, a very basic interpretation, but that's what it sounds like. So, you know, you're talking about what it sounds like, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well spent. Uh, to me, uh, it also sounds uh, much more positive than uh, my feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, good vibes. And I think um, it's also because uh, I understand the, the, the word existential uh, in a different way. Uh, it basically connects to like existential crisis and this like looking for meaning and purpose in life. And it connects it with the hope, so I agree. It's it, it's more like a present present day thing, not, not far far future, and and it's a very positive. Thing. Yeah. No, I think this is a great data point for me also that it may just have been my mind that jumped ahead to like connect, yeah, to make it a lot easier. So, like my thoughts on this are like I think so long termism as a concept always feels like somewhat icky to me, you know, we, like, it, as, as a concept, like, the world, like, demands something, like, the future demanding something of the present, and, like, that feels, like, yeah, somewhat, like, calculus -y, you know, weird or something, relative to which I think, like, transhumanism sounds something more interesting, in a way, of, like, continuation of something that is already there, transcending, what is that like it, it, yeah it's it's something like about pushing the boundaries or something and then when i think about like why is it that like even though this concept has been around like existential as much as existential risk why do we talk more about existential risk than hope seems to me to be like like a lot of this is about messaging to some extent messaging is about like building coalitions and I think at some point, like, people started thinking probably that, like, or, like, maybe the way to build the broadest coalition is to agree on a baseline that we don't all want to die. That, and that's, like, so let's focus on risk. 
because that's the way that, that that's something that everyone can agree on whereas like for hope well my hope might look very different from your hope and like it's it takes work to actually figure out what sorts of future like fulfill both my hope and your hope like like it requires more work but i think like i agree that there's a sense in which like when you when you build the foundation of the coalition on the the, the field like it, it it it's not only that it's simple but it's probably somewhat it can be somewhat counterproductive on the margin because like here is the mind killer sort of thing like because like everyone is together not because everyone wants to go towards the same thing or or is even paying attention to what is the thing that they want to go towards but like everyone is trying to move away from something but then they, they don't necessarily know where to go or something and and that can be like somewhat paralyzing in, in group like as collective um agency or something and and that sense it seems to me that it's interesting to me that this concept has been around because like is doesn't get the same like airspace as like rests um yeah so, so it, yeah it, yeah it seems valuable to me to like intention you could pass some attention to it <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 he looks at me so okay. he's like always dying has he seen me weeks wow. and he's typing right now <laughs> <laughs> how many times you got to get control zone well i think so that, i mean that's a we have uh, Anna's going to talk next. So, um, yeah, no, I think that's a great place to sort of wrap up on. But I agree. And I think like a big part of it is that, or to me, maybe I just feel this, but to me, when I say, oh, let's aim for existential hope, I feel like I'm being very naive and ridiculous. Like that, you know, that the X risk is like, no, we need to, because obviously, like, we need to think about the existential risk. That's part of the navigating. Um, I'm just saying, like, well, let's have a North Star, like something like that. Or um, Star Trek got a lot more built in 1984. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.